zeal in 2016. Give us new fire in 2016. Give us new joy in 2016. Give us new breakthroughs in 2016. Give us new heights in 2016. Give us new glory in 2016. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you. Even as we hear your word and as we come into your presence tonight, we pray, O oh God, that you will help us to recognize your voice speaking to us and help us to treasure your word, even as the Blessed Mother treasured your word. That, Father, we may not depart from your word, but that we may hearken unto your word and do that which you have commanded us to do. That we may be faithful and fruitful in 2016 in the mighty name of jesus christ our lord if you believe it shout seven loud amen, amen. and somebody shout a big hallelujah Amen and amen. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. How many people feel blessed today already? I want to let you know that even as we are gathered here, your brothers and sisters, fellow Catholics, fellow believers, fellow daily strength users, are also gathered back in Delta State, rounding up the 21-day fasting and prayer. I spoke to them this evening, and I was told that there's a mammoth crowd over there. And they asked me to tell you that they are one with you in prayer. And I was believing that this, this gathering of believers shall one day have a national daily strength conference. Amen. So I thank God for every one of you. Let me tell the person beside you, I thank God for you. Amen. Listen, as we are going to pray tonight, we want to ask God, as we have prayed and fasted, to lead us into the, through the rest of the year. And we are going to use the symbol of light in our prayer tonight. The Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows the light will not walk in darkness, but we have the light of life. Amen. When you have light behind you, where is your shadow? You see as I'm back in the light now, my shadow is where? Right in front of me, Right? But if you turn your back, if you turn your face to the light, your shadow does what? Goes behind you. And you know the shadow is always dark. The shadow is always dark. And everybody has a shadow. Do you have a shadow? Eh? Does your neighbor have a shadow? Look at the person very well. Any person will not get shadow now, spirit. Look the person when sit down near you. Look ground whether the person gets shadow. <laughs> Amen. Everybody has a shadow. And the darkness of the shadow symbolizes the dark side of life. The darkness of the shadow symbolizes bad things in life, the negative things in life. Our disappointments, our heartbreaks, our sicknesses, our diseases, our frustrations, our negativity is symbolized in the darkness of the shadow. And we all have them. Everybody has his own share of bad things in life, of failures and near successes and frustrations. We all have them. You see, but if you turn your back to Jesus, then all of that negativity will stretch out in front of you. And you realize that no matter how fast you run, 
you can never overtake your shadow. In fact, the faster you run, the faster your shadow goes ahead of you. So if you turn your back to Jesus, you see that all the bad things of life, they will just be stretched out in front of you. And no matter how hard you try in life, they just keep extending. Life becomes a chain of problem solving. But when you turn your face to the light, your shadow goes behind you. When you have Jesus leading you into the year, all your negativity go behind you. Your frustrations will go behind you. Your failures will go behind you. Your sufferings will go behind you. It is not as if you don't have them. They are there, but you are no longer aware of them. Because you are walking in the light. Hallelujah. So I'm going to encourage you through this year, 2016, to always have a light burning in your home. Always have a candle light burning in your home to symbolize the presence of Jesus as your light through the year. Have a sacred heart altar at home. You know you are always supposed to have your light burning. That is a wonderful piece of devotion. And it's wonderful theology. It's powerful. But if you don't have one, get a light. And have it in your home. Keep it burning. Whenever you are praying, put it on. To symbolize Jesus, the light of the world, leading you through the year 2016. You find that every time you enter into our church, one of the first things you notice in the sanctuary is a sanctuary light. And it's always on. It's not supposed to go out no matter what. Whether there is nepa or no nepa. So have your light in 2016. Amen. Amen. And as we are going to pray tonight, we are going to ask you to have a light in your hand. So if there are, I don't know how many people around are the, the, the vendors who are selling candles, if you don't have one, make sure you get one. Make sure you get one. Okay? At the beginning of this year, we customize a special candle for the year of mercy. They're also available. Get one. We're going to pray with that. So that Jesus will lead us through the rest of the year. As the light of the world. May you never walk in darkness in Jesus name. May the light lead you in the path of glory. May Jesus lead you from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. How many people came with your Bibles tonight? If you came with your Bible, stand up and wave it. If you are a daily strength user, you must know that you always have your Bible. If you have your Bible, stand up and wave it. Any person beside you who doesn't have, ask the person, where's your Bible? Hey, those of you behind, where's your Bible? If you don't have one, go and buy now. Government is stopping importation of Bibles as from tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have your Bible, raise it up. Pray with me. Say, this is the word of God. This is the sword of the spirit. I believe what it says of God. I stand on his promises. I live by its instructions. The entrance of God's word brings light and understanding. As this word goes forth now, may it find a home in my heart to the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the church says, Amen. Hallelujah. 
be seated. If you can turn with me to Psalm 18. Psalm 18. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. Amen. Tonight we are sharing about the power of praise. The power of praise. Amen. Are you there? The psalmist says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. Amen. I want to also read from Psalm 33. Verse 1 to verse 3. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. Amen. Psalm 35. Psalm 35. Verse 18. I will give you thanks. In the great assembly, among the throngs of people, I will praise you. I will praise you. I'm going down to Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Let the saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all. His saints. Psalm 147. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. How good it is to sing praise. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his heavenly hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars.
praise him, you highest heavens and waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Verse 7, praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his splendor is above the earth and the heavens. May the Lord bless the reading of his word through Christ our Lord. Let the church say Amen. Let the church say Amen. God has spoken and I believe it. So let the church say amen, say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church, let the church say amen. God has spoken, God has spoken. I believe in let the church. So let the church say amen. Oh, let the church. Let the church say amen. Oh, let the church. Let the church say amen. Spoken. And I believe it. And I believe it. Let the church, let the church say Amen. God has spoken. And I believe it. And I believe it. I believe it. So let the church say Amen. My brothers and my sisters, of all the kings in the history of the world, of all the earthly kings, there is none that is as influential as King David. There is none that has affected and continues to give joy to the hearts of people as King David. When we think of David, the things that come to our minds, the images that come to our minds would include what? Giant killer, right? Remember David slaying Goliath. That is one of the beautiful images that comes to our mind when we think of King David. When we think of, think of King David, we think of this warrior king. And just last week, remember we were reading how David, in fact it was this week on Monday, remember how the king cut off part of Saul's garment he had every opportunity to kill Saul but he didn't and in fact after cutting off his garment he started regretting it and I was sharing about this in church and I said Saul said to himself you know I, he was pursuing David and they were very close to David and his, and his men and the king said he, he needed to answer to the call of nature he had to go ease himself. So, 
He looked around and in one of the caves, he decided to go into one of the caves as a king. You know, he has his bodyguards. But how many bodyguards would go with him to the convenience? He had to go alone. So there was the king, took off his garments and stooped to ease himself. Little did he know that David was behind him. One blow, his head could have been off. Remember, David was carrying the sword of Goliath. With one strike, the head of the king would have been off. But he didn't. Instead, he cut off a piece of his garment. So after the king had finished easing himself, he puts on his garment... And part of the garment is torn behind. Probably around the buttocks. Eh? And the king is walking and his bum bum is showing. And all the men who are behind him, they are laughing just the way you are laughing now. And they are wondering, oh my goodness, what happened to the king's bum bum? Look at him, oh his bum bum is showing, oh. Everybody was probably laughing and the king would turn around and say, what are you poor laughing about? No, king, nothing. we're not laughing about anything. Everything is okay. David was such a wonderful king filled with compassion. He brought so many victories to Israel. David is one king who never lost any battle. Never lost any battle. God was always on David's side. And the Messiah is called the son of David. Now I want you to listen very closely to this sermon I'm sharing with you now. Because it will change your life. Hallelujah. David was, the Bible calls him a man after the heart of God. When we think of David, we think of glorious things. We think of strength and power and victory and success. But this David was also a great sinner. This David brought a lot of trouble to Israel. This David was a man of blood. And that is why God said to him, are you the man who is to build me a house? God said, no, David, not you. Because you are a man of blood. Tell me, my dear friends, what sin did Saul commit that made God reject Saul that David did not commit? Did, did Saul take another man's wife? Did Saul kill another woman's husband? Yes, Saul had his own sins and you and I cannot really judge which one is greater but from the look of things when you think of the, some of the things that David did you realize that when Saul was pursuing David David went to hide in the Philistine territory and he was fighting for them David will even go and attack a Philistine town and come back and the king will ask him, David, where did you go to raid today? He will tell the king, I went to raid the Israelites. So what did Saul do that is so great that God could not forgive him? Why was God seemingly biased in the direction of David? David 
takes another man's wife, kills the man, causes confusion among the soldiers. And you know what makes that sin even more terrible? Is that this Bathsheba was the granddaughter of a man called Ahitophel. And Ahitophel was David's number one advisor. David's number one advisor. His best counselor. Ahitophel's counsel was like prophecy. When he spoke, it was as if God had spoken through Ahitophel. This is a man who eats at David's table. This is a man that David will wait for his counsel before he takes a decision. And you go and kill the husband? You take your counselor's granddaughter without consulting the man? That was why Ahitophel was so angry with him. And when Absalom wanted to take his father's throne and David fled from Jerusalem, the first person Absalom sent for was Ahitophel. So Ahitophel came. And the first advice he gave to Absalom was to make sure he paid David back. He told Absalom, go and build a tent on the roof of your father's house. After all, he was walking on that roof when he saw my granddaughter baiting. Go and build a tent on that roof and ask all your father's wives to come up to you there and start sleeping with them one after the other. David. And Uriah that David sent to his death was one of the inner circle of David's warriors. So also was Bathsheba's father. He was one of the most loyal soldiers of David. One of David's 300 henchmen. So if you were one of those dead and David kills one of them, what would you think about yourself? If he could do it to this man, he can do it to any of us. Yet, the Bible says, David was a man after the heart of God. So what made David different? David different from every other person. And what made David's prayers always win favor with God? And my dear friends, that is where I want to lead us tonight. Yes, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but we can still win favor. We can still be in his good books. And David knew the secret of being in God's good books. David knew the way to approach God. And get God to listen. And what is that way? Praise. Everybody say praise. praise. David knew how to praise God. Now if you look at that Psalm 18 that we first read. From verse 1 to verse 3. David said, I love you Lord my God. He started calling God names. He said, you are my deliverer. My fortress my horn, my strong tower. Did he make any prayer there? Nothing. What is he doing? He's just praising God. He's just praising God for who God is. Now, keep this in mind because there's difference between praise and thanks. Very often, people mix the two. Praise when you praise God, you are praising God for who he is. When you thank him, you thank him for what he has done. 
But can you praise him when you don't see him doing something in your life? Can you? Are you sure? Because there are a lot of believers, they can't praise. Why? Because they don't see the evidence of God in their lives. But David was a man who always praised. And that is why you see the Psalms that are attributed to David, they are filled with praise. Filled with praise. David always giving praise, always honoring God. So, you see, when Saul was rejected, when Saul was rejected, and God said to Samuel, go to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. And Samuel came to town and came to Jesse's house and Jesse sent for his boys and the boys came one after the other. The elders came and Samuel looked at him and Samuel said, surely this is God's anointed because he was tall and handsome, built very much like Saul. And Samuel thought, oh, this is a good replacement for Saul. But God said, uh-uh. This is not the one. He said to Samuel, don't make the mistake of looking at the externals because I look at the heart. And the second son came along and God said, I have still not chosen this. And the third one, and God said, still not this. And all the sons of Jesse came before Samuel and God said, none of these have I chosen. And Samuel said to Jesse, are these all your boys? Jesse said, yes. Are they finished? He said, yes. And the wife probably said to, he, the, to, the, to Jesse, darling, are you not forgetting somebody? Who is that? David. Oh, oh, ah, yes, sorry. It's the prophet, there's one more that is left. But it's good for nothing. He is such a troublesome boy, so we send him to go take care of the animals. Because whenever he's home, he's always getting into trouble. So Samuel said, oh, there's still one left. <laughs> yes, but a prophet, don't bother. Just take one out of these ones. That David is not good for anything. And the prophet says, we're not going to sit down until he gets here. And you can imagine the brothers laughing and say, hey, we're going to have to wait for David. Ah, what kind of prophet is this? He has no idea who David is. We don't even, so the father says, boys, okay, go get your brother David. And they probably say to their father, okay, where are we going to find him? Because we don't know where he has taken the animals. Maybe they have gone as far as Shechem or Gilgal. We don't know where to find. Samuel said, go look for him. So they go in search of David. They're going from one town, one village to another, wondering and asking, have you seen our brother David with our father's flock? Oh, he was here not too long ago, but we don't know where he has moved to. Oh my goodness. Where do we find this David for goodness sakes? And eventually... They probably ran into somebody who said, Oh, we saw him with the flock on the other side of the mountain. And they get to the other side. They see the flock all feeding on their own in a beautifully green grassed area. But David is nowhere to be found. Okay, where has he left the flock and gone to now? And one of the brothers says, Hold on now. I hear some music coming from behind that tree. Could that be him? And they get there. And there is David stringing his guitar. And he's, he's trying out some new psalms that he had just written. Immediately he sees his brothers. He jumps up. And Eliab starts yelling at him. Is this what you do? You just leave the flock by themselves? What is wrong with you? And David says, oh, my brothers, it's so good to see you. Hey, you know what? I will just try some new praises that I've just written. You want to listen to them? Oh, please, don't, don't, don't touch me without your smelling animal body. Uh, 
And they said, David says, but what are you doing here? You brought some, some refreshment for me. Oh, come on. We're going home because daddy wants to see you. We have a guest. And as they are going back home with the flock, David probably wants to hug the brothers and nobody wants to touch him because he smells like the animals. But even as they are walking along, David is playing his music. He's playing his stringed instrument and just praising God and dancing and coming home. And when he gets home, the mother comes out of the kitchen and David rushes over to greet the mother. And the mother says, oh son, go wash, go wash because the prophet is waiting for you. David says, which prophet? The mother says, Samuel. Samuel? That great prophet we've been hearing about? Is he here in our house? Can I go see him? He's rushing to go look and the mother pulls him back. Say, David, they've been waiting for you. Go and wash quickly so that you can join them. And he rushes to wash. But as a young boy who is excited, he wants to see the man of God, what he's like. He probably comes out of the bathroom. There is still grass in his hair. And the mother says, did you wash? You know how as mothers you do that to us kids? Are you sure you washed? Because there's water didn't get to your back. And the mother is probably removing hair, say, removing grass from his hair. Say, quickly, now go, 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 join them. And he comes into the living room. And Samuel gets up and takes a look at him and God says, he is the one. Anoint him. And Samuel probably looks beyond David thinking there is somebody else coming behind him. Because this little one, this one that looks like so frail and so weak. But God, how can you choose this one that is looking so weak? And you leave this one that is looking so strong. But remember the Bible says God chooses the weak to confound the strong. God says anoint him. And so Samuel says to him son get down on your knees. He pours oil on the head of David. He anoints him. And after anointing him. Samuel probably goes down on his knees. And says hail. Oh king. And he tells Jesse and his brothers, get down on your knees. And they all get down on their knees. And David is probably looking at them wondering what is going on here. And his father and brothers. And they all get down on their knees and they say, Hail, oh king. I believe that that night after they had supper, Samuel probably took David by the hand and they took a walk. And he taught David how to be attentive to the word of God just as he himself heard the voice and was able to say, speak Lord, your servant is listening. I believe he would have spoken with David late into the night and gone to bed. Early in the morning, the prophet departed. After he departed, guess what the brothers did to David? They probably went to where David was still sleeping with a cup of water and started pouring water on his head. Say, so let us, prophet anointed him with oil yesterday. Let us give him our own anointing with water. And they start pouring water on his head. Hail, O king. My friend, come on, get up. You are still sleeping at this time. What's wrong with you? Who is going to take the animals out? Even after the anointing, David still had to take the animals out. He did not go around town boasting to people, hey, do you know the prophet anointed me yesterday? He didn't do that. Instead, David returned to what he was doing best. And in everything, David kept praising God. He kept praising God, blessing God. So in that Psalm 18, he said, I love you, O Lord. Listen to the names that he's calling God. I love you, O Lord, my strength. He says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, 
my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. David knew how to speak to God. Until God was compelled to say, I must do something for this, my son. Do you know how to speak to God? As a person beside you, do you know how to speak the language of God? You know, David is the kind of man that when he comes before God, he speaks in a way that God truly, he gets God's attention. But this is the way that many of us come into the presence of God. When many of us come into the presence of God, we are like this. God, I'm not happy. Oh. I'm not just happy the way my life is going. Oh. Eh? Everything is just going from bad to worse. Is it only me? Eh? Am I the worst person in the world? Why is everything just going wrong for me? None of my plans are working at all. God, I don't like the way my life is going. Oh. You better do something about it oh, because I don't like it. Oh. It's better for me to just die. Oh. That's the way some of us come into God's presence. Grumbling and complaining. I preached a message some time ago and I titled it, Don't Complain Your Blessings Away. That is the way some people come before God. Some other persons, when they come before God, they are like that. God. When will you bless me now? Look at, look at my friend that we went to school together. He was not even more intelligent than myself. Oh. Look at him now. See the great job he has. Okay, look at my man Kechi. Eh? I got married before her. She, now she has two boys and, and one girl. Me, I, 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 have not even, I don't even have any child yet. What is it now, God? Eh? Every person around me, it, things are just going well for them. They are, nothing is going well for me. God, this is not fair. That's some people's prayer. Always comparing themselves to others. Some other persons come into God's presence and they are like, God, I'm not happy with you. I'm not just happy at all. What, I have been serving you for how many years? What do I have to show for it now? It is better for me to just serve Juju and, and let me suffer. Some people come before God actually accusing God. Some other pieces come before God and they are like that. God, I thank you. Thank you for everything you are doing for me. But... I need I need promotion. I need a new car. I need I need new house. Bless my children. Some people's own is always ask, 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 ask. Then some people's own, when they come before God, their own is. God. Hmm. Hmm. God. Are you still there? Do you even hear me at all? I have been fasting and praying. Oh. That is some people's prayer. Some other persons come before God and they just say, God, That's some people's prayer. Which one be your own inside? Let me ask the person beside you. Which one be your own inside? Huh? 
Is your <laughs> which one be your? You see, you can imagine the throne room of God filled with people. Every person, some are complaining, some are grumbling, some are lamenting, some are quarreling with God, some are asking, give, 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 give. And the throne room is filled with people. And God is just looking at everybody like that. Seated on his throne. Looking at everybody. Everybody, some are... Oh, I didn't talk about one. Uh, let, me, let me just quickly go back a little bit and talk about that one. Some people's prayer is this. God, any person that is behind this, my suffering, die. In fact, any person that looks me with evil eye, die. Any person that gossip me, die. That's some people who pray I'll be that. Which one be your own again? So, in the true room of God, you have people making all kinds of prayer. Some are saying, die, 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 die. Some are saying, fire, 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 fire. Some are saying, give, 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 give. Some are saying, God, 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 God. Some are saying, and then here comes David. At the back of the line. He's looking above the crowd. He cannot get to where God is. But he has his guitar. And he tweaks his guitar. And David calls from the back of the crowd. Jesus. You are worthy. Savior. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy to be praised. Thou art to be praised. Thou alone art worthy to be praised. Thou alone art worthy to be praised. And once David raises his voice up like that in song from the back of the room, of the throne room of God, oh, God raises his eyes. And he turns to Jesus and says, who is that? And Jesus says, don't you trust? It's David. And God smiles. And he says, oh, so in the midst of this cacophony of voices, somebody can still praise me. Ah. Then Jesus stands up and is looking at David and saying, come on, David, sing it again. And David goes, Jesus, you are worthy. Savior, thou art worthy, thou alone worthy to be praised, thou alone art worthy to be praised, thou alone art worthy to be praised, thou alone art worthy to be praised. Blessed mother gets up. You know, for you who are mothers, when you hear people criticizing your husband or your children, how do you feel? Are you happy? When you hear people singing the praise of your husband or your children, how do you feel? Don't you feel excited? So watch the blessed mother get up. As she hears David giving praise, she gets up. And she goes like, David, please sing it for my son again. <laughs> Jesus, you are worthy. Savior, thou art worthy. Thou art worthy to be praised. Thou art worthy to be praised. So now watch the father Abraham get up. Abraham
Abraham stands up. Noah gets up. Isaac gets up. Jacob gets up. Moses gets up. And they stand all with, with David. And Joseph joins the three. And they begin to sing with David. Jesus, you are worthy. To be praised, thou art worthy to be praised, thou art worthy to be praised, thou art worthy to be praised. And as they join David is singing, watch the prophets stand up. Isaiah gets up. Ezekiel gets up. Micah gets up. Zephaniah gets up. Zechariah gets up. Habakkuk gets up. And they unite with David. Together with the judges, Samuel gets up. And Samuel said, that's my boy. Deborah gets up. Ha! The women of scripture, they get up with Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel and Leah and they all join David and they are praising God, singing Jesus you are the Savior that To be so now the 24 elders in heaven they are up on their feet they remove their crowns and they bow in the presence of God the cherubim and the seraphim they join now the choirs of angels the archangels they join now the powers and the dominions the principalities and their powers they all unite their voices with David and the whole of heaven is chorusing Jesus you are worthy, Savior, thou art worthy, thou art worthy to be praised, thou art worthy to be praised, thou art worthy to be To be then now the apostles join oh Peter is up and Paul is up and Mary Magdalene and James and John and Thomas and Simon and Jude ah they are up now the martyrs are up the virgins are up all of them sent Paul is up. John Paul is up. The blessed in heaven, they are up. Blessed Tansy is up. Joseph is up. And all of them are joining David. And they are chorusing, Jesus, you are worthy. Hey! Savior, thou art worthy. gets up. Ha, ya, ya. 
the Holy Spirit is hovering around everybody now and is beginning to distribute gifts upon everybody. He's sharing joy in the heart of everybody. He's sharing laughter and peace and righteousness and pouring glory on the host of heaven. Everybody is united now. The Holy Spirit is united and Jesus gets up and watch now God the Father himself gets up from his throne and God begins to take glory. The prophet Zephaniah says on that day your father will dance. God will dance. He says he will rejoice over you as people do on the day of festival. God himself gets up and God begins to dance as David and all the hosts of heaven they are beginning to worship and they are singing Jesus you are worthy Savior that that to be praised to be praised Thou alone to be praised Thou alone is worthy to be praised Sekene numeya Kene numeya Kene numeya Kene ni jesu Kene numeya Kene ni jesu is praising with David and watch all those people who were gathered in the throne room complaining and shouting and screaming everybody gives way now and David is in the front of the line and you know in the Delta when people have funerals we celebrate funerals and usually you have some canopies that are occupied by traditional orators and as somebody is coming into the arena they begin to praise the person as they are heaping titles and praise on the person, pretty much like when you go for Yoruba weddings and you have the drummers, they come and they play around you and they start singing praise and in the east they, they blow the flute and they are praising the person and calling the person titles and, and the person puts his hand in his pocket and begins to dish out money. As, you are, as David is praising God, God gets up from the throne and puts his hands in his bag of blessings and just begins to bless David. And he's just blessing David and blessing David and blessing David. And you see, as the praises get more, people respond more. As David praises God more, God digs deeper in his bag of blessings and just begins to shower blessings on David. Including the things that he never asked for. Because up till this time, he has not asked for anything yet. He's just praising. 
and God is already blessing him. And David looks and said, but daddy, I, I, I didn't ask for this. God said, take it, my child. I know you will need it. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Do you realize when you start praising God, the heavens above you are open. And God begins to shower down blessings on you. Even before you have asked anything of God. Can I tell you something? Do you realize that the Eucharistic celebration, the Mass, is one long prayer of praise? Ah, you're looking at me surprised. I told you, I said, hear this message. It will transform your life. It will transform the way you look at the Mass, even the way you participate in the Mass.